I'm thinking now of the Freedmen's Bureau and mm -hmm. the the injunction that African Americans or freed mm -hmm. peoples be required to marry yes. if they wanted whatever the benefits of householdership or definitely the, or, that marriage was seen by those in power as a way to control men, really. <laughs> that once right. a man was married, he was legally obligated to support his wife and children. That was not true of someone just living with a partner, willingly. So it had a benefit for the state and that that person could be, their wages could be taken or they could be thrown in right. the poor house, et cetera. Or be responsible for each other's mm -hmm. debts, or exactly, but, exactly. But here's a question. So, among we know, we know that among white men, the requirement that men provide for their wives and children had consequences for women in the mm -hmm. workforce, discouraging employers mm -hmm. from hiring married women, sometimes legally sometimes by custom. Mm -hmm. But what about for black women? Did marriage have the same implication for them? Did it, ha did it carry the same kinds of protections that it carried for white women? Legally, yes, it absolutely did. That African-American women who were legally married, their husbands could be chased down by the law if they failed to support. And in fact, uh, during Reconstruction, after the Freedmen's Bureau put in a great push for African-American men to marry their wives and to decide between two women if they'd been married to two different women at some time because of sale and separation of families. Yes, actually, the state authorities, particularly in the states that had had slavery, used the marriage laws to persecute and prosecute African-American men if they did not support their families. Mm. So these marriage laws could they were regulatory laws, there's no question about it. And they were used in punitive ways, differentially racially, I would say. And uh, as your student Annette Igra showed, during the Depression, many men, black and white, were thrown into prison to do prison labor when they were deserting their families because they could not support them. Right. So these, these state laws were quite punitive to men at the same time that certainly, as you say, the women who tried to get wage earning jobs were discriminated against because married men were seen to be the privileged wage earners who absolutely needed to have a wage. Right. So that these could be made to harm both men and women, although they, like the tax laws today, they benefited those who conformed to the expected ideal that the laws were written to benefit if they in some way did not conform no matter in which direction they tended to get the the short end of the stick or the the sharp end of the law